I'll be a little more familiar with before I start reading. And so I just want to kind of give you a little bit of background information on them before I get into the meat of it. And the first character that you really need to know about, and it'll be, it'll be very clear from the very beginning that this is a very important character to, to the poem, is Horse Gum. That's Horse Gum. You know, horse, as in horse, and gone. <laughs> okay? So that, that's, that's significant. You need to know horse gone. And the other character that's, that's really essential to tonight and your enjoyment of tonight is Bunchy. And that's Bunchy as in <laughs> Bunchy. Um, so the piece is called It is Tennis Day. <coughs> And I'm, I'm really, really happy to read it for you now tonight. <laughs> <laughs> 
It is tennis day. Horse Gome enters the saloon at 11. Horse Gome ties Bunchy to the guardrail. Horse Gome slides away out of view. Horse Gome wonders about Bunchy's future with the organization. Horse Gome appears on the other side of the bar. Horse Gome asks the barkeep for a brandy. Horse Gome tips the barkeep well. Horse Gome remembers he doesn't drink. Horse Gome force feeds the brandy to Bunchy. Horse Gome says you're welcome when Bunchy says thank you. Horse Gome makes a disparaging remark. Horse Gome reaches into his briefcase, which he left at the saloon on Thursday. Horse Gome retrieves a packet of protein powder from his briefcase. Horse Gome eats the packet of protein powder. Horse Gome retrieves shoulder pads from the briefcase and shoves them into Bunchy's sweater. Horse Gome revels in Bunchy's appreciation. Horse Gome digs around in the briefcase for a few minutes. Horse Gome finds his iPhone in the briefcase. Horse Gome makes a phone call. Horse Gome checks his email while he makes a phone call. Horse Gome got six new emails from the container store. Horse Gome tries to unsubscribe from the container store mailing list. Horse Gome is told that he cannot unsubscribe from the container store mailing list from his phone. Horse Gome hears a dial tone. Horse Gome looks up. Horse Gome wonders where Bunchy went. Horse Gome was not on the phone that long. Horse Gome walks outside the saloon. Horse Gome realizes it is tennis day. Horse Gome always liked tennis day. Horse Gome heads to the stadium. Horse Gome greets the players on the field. Horse Gome is greeted by the players on the field. Horse Gome revels in the commencement of the game. Horse Gome sits in his special seat. Horse Gome flags down the hot dog man. Horse Gome inquires about the hot dog man's boy. Horse Gome dismisses the hot dog man. Horse Gome cheers at the appropriate times. Horse Gome cries at the appropriate times. Horse Gome appears on the scoreboard 11 times. Horse Gome leaves the stadium filled with a sense of purpose. Horse Gome says, I am going to find you, Bunchy. Horse Gome finds Bunchy in a tree, quivering. Horse Gome quivers sympathetically. Horse Gome forgets that he's supposed to pick up Albing at the mall. Horse Gome never cared about Albing's feelings anyway. Horse Gome knows his favorite intern is Albing. Horse Gome knows his least favorite intern is Bunchy. Horse Gome coughs. Horse Gome walks around the tree three times. Horse Gome observes it is the only tree visible in any direction. Horse Gome observes Bunchy quivering. Horse Gome observes Oak Gome approaching with her trademarked bundle of wheat. Horse Gome devises a plan. Horse Gome apprehends Oak Gome on the path. Horse Gome asks Oak Gome for her bundle of wheat. Horse Gome hears Oak Gome refuse. Horse Gome thanks Oak Gome anyway. Horse Gome sees Bunchy wave at Oak Gome. Horse Gome sees Oak Gome wave back at Bunchy. Horse Gome feels jealousy. Horse Gome waves at Oak Gome and Bunchy simultaneously. Horse Gome sees Oak Gome and Bunchy wave back. Horse Gome asks Oak Gome for her bundle of wheat one more time. Horse Gome even offers a reward. Horse Gome trades Oak Gome a reward for her trademarked bundle of wheat.
Horse Gum waves goodbye to Oak Gum as she continues down the path. Horse Gum wishes Oak Gum luck. Horse Gum knows how much Bunchy loves wheat. Horse Gum waits. Horse Gum watches Bunchy watch Horse Gum. Horse Gum realizes Bunchy is smarter than he thought. Horse Gum reverses his opinion of his interns. Horse Gum remembers he is supposed to pick up Albing at the mall. Horse Gum drives to the mall. Horse Gum finds Albing in the food court at the mall eating a bagel. Horse Gum takes Albing home. Horse Gum collects the gas money from Albing. Horse Gum swipes bagel crumbs from his passenger seat. Horse Gum returns to the tree. Horse Gum wants to know where Bunchy went. Horse Gum wants to know where Oak Gum's bundle of wheat went. Horse Gum decides to mull it over at the saloon. Horse Gum returns to the saloon. Horse Gum asks the barkeep for his briefcase. Horse Gum retrieves his iPhone from the briefcase. Horse Gum Googles wheat. Horse Gum is not satisfied with what he finds Googling wheat. Horse Gum creates a Tinder account. Horse Gum filters the age settings on his Tinder account so only 19-year-olds show. Horse Gum <laughs> scrolls through 400 19-year-olds. Horse Gum finds a 19-year-old that he likes. Horse Gum messages the 19-year-old, hi. Horse Gum waits to hear back. Horse Gum checks to see if the 19-year-old is writing back yet. Horse Gum is unsure what to do while he waits. Horse Gum never liked waiting. Horse Gum leaves the saloon to find the 19-year-old. Horse Gum sees the 19-year-old getting into a car. Horse Gum hails a cab. Horse Gum tells the cab to follow that car. Horse Gum follows that car in the cab. Horse Gum is not sure if what he is doing is morally sound. Horse Gum tells the cab driver to take him to the sock hop instead. Horse Gum wants to know why the cab driver is not responding. Horse Gum opens the dividing window and finds the skeleton driving the cab. Horse Gum checks his iPhone to see if the 19-year-old is typing back yet. Horse Gum wonders how long he has been in the cab. Horse Gum exits the cab while it is moving. Horse Gum rolls on asphalt. Horse Gum watches the cab careen into the container store. Horse Gum wonders when he last saw something careen. Horse Gum says yes when a bystander asks if he is all right. Horse Gum brushes off his hindquarters. Horse Gum watches Bunchy emerge from the container store. Horse Gum considers a new box. Horse Gum balks at the idea of a new box. Horse Gum follows Bunchy to the sock hop. Horse Gum shows his badge to the fat man at the door. Horse Gum nods to the fat man at the door after gaining access to the sock hop. Horse Gum enters the sock hop. Horse Gum sees how beautifully the sock hop is decorated. Horse Gum feels his heart warmed by the beauty of the sock hop's decorations. Horse Gum photographs the sock hop's decorations with his iPhone for future reference. Horse Gum hopes to have a beautiful home someday. Horse Gum likes the music. Horse Gum scans the crowd. Horse Gum sees Bunchy dancing with the 19-year-old who is wearing sock cop clothes. Horse Gum thinks that this is an age-appropriate match. Horse Gum feels satisfied. Horse Gum notices everyone is wearing sock cop clothes. Horse Gum checks his clothes. Horse Gum is not wearing sock cop clothes. Horse Gum feels self-conscious and wills himself into sock cop clothes. Horse Gum dances with the banker. Horse Gum is having a good time at the sock hop. 
Horsecomb trips over something on the floor. Horsecomb knocks over the punch bowl and feels self-conscious. Horsecomb notices nobody noticed he knocked over the punch bowl. Horsecomb feels better. Horsecomb dismisses the banker. Horsecomb looks to see what he tripped over. Horsecomb realizes it was a cell phone. Horsecomb realizes the cell phone belonged to Taylor Swift. Horsecomb looks around the sock hop for Taylor Swift. Horsecomb realizes Taylor Swift already left the sock hop. Horsecomb calls Questlove from Taylor Swift's cell phone. Horsecomb asks Questlove if he wants to record a CD. Horsecomb goes to the recording studio. Horsecomb finds Questlove murdered by a poison dart. Horsecomb solves the case. <laughs> Horsecomb decides to celebrate his success. Horsecomb goes to the amusement park. Horsecomb always <laughs> liked to ride the train at the amusement park. Horsecomb buys a ticket for the train. Horsecomb boards the train. Horsecomb shakes lightly with the train's initial movement. Horsecomb feels the breeze in his hair as the train gains velocity. Horsecomb feels at peace on the train. Horsecomb sees the fiberglass mountains. Horsecomb always liked the fiberglass mountains, Horsecomb thinks about his adoptive father. Horsecomb reclines. Horsecomb enters a tunnel along the tracks. Horsecomb sees the animatronic cave monster. Horsecomb thinks about when his adoptive father brought him a plush version of the animatronic cave monster from the amusement park gift shop. Horsecomb wonders what happens. looks closer at an unfamiliar victim and compares it to his memory. Horsecomb realizes the unfamiliar victim is Bunchy in disguise. Horsecomb jumps off the train. Horsecomb lands on an animatronic victim. Horsecomb replaces the animatronic victim's arm. Horsecomb sees Bunchy run toward the cave monster. Horsecomb watches Bunchy disappear into a hatch behind the cave monster. Horsecomb has never realized that Hatch was there. Horsecomb loses another fragment of his waning childhood innocence. Horsecomb follows Bunchy through the hatch. Horsecomb is in the hallway of bright white light. Horsecomb notices the hallway is lined with hatches, which he cannot open. Horsecomb continues down the hallway. Horsecomb cannot reach the end of the hallway. Horsecomb continues. Horsecomb continues. Horsecomb searches for Bunchy. Horsecomb continues. Horsecomb continues. Horsecomb continues. Horsecomb grows desperate. Horsecomb continues. Horsecomb grows weary. Horsecomb cannot continue. Horsecomb falls asleep despite the brightness of the tunnel of light. Horsecomb has a nightmare. Horsecomb dreams he is in a submarine with Bunchy. Horsecomb watches Bunchy eat the large ripe fruit in the submarine. Horsecomb dreams Bunchy will not share. Horsecomb realizes he has no mouth in his dream. Horsecomb dreams that he feels better about Bunchy, but worse about not having a mouth. Horsecomb is dragged out of the submarine by Questlove. Horsecomb <laughs> is dragged through a hatch as he sleeps. Horsecomb awakens, tied to the guardrail. Horsecomb is in an all-red room with all-red light. Horsecomb thinks the room seems futuristic, but not as futuristic as the tunnel seemed. Horsecomb sees 23 people. Horsecomb is fed cake by one of the people. Horsecomb says, thank you, and the people say, you're welcome in unison. Horsecomb asks who the people are. Horsecomb says, nice to meet you all. Horsecomb watches the people prepare the second cake in religious silence. Horsecomb wriggles free from his ties. Horsecomb exits quietly through the service door. Horsecomb gives the amusement park a good rating on Yelp. Horsecomb feels hunger. Horsecomb had the foresight to check his briefcase at the ticket counter. 
Horsegum digs through his briefcase. Horsegum is out of packets of protein powder. Horsegum goes to the supermarket. Horsegum tries a sample of white hummus on a rice cracker and then another. Horsegum walks down aisle three. Horsegum puts items in his basket. Horsegum walks down aisle four. Horsegum puts items in his basket. Horsegum goes to the checkout counter. Horsegum is asked, paper or plastic? Horsegum sizes up the bag boy. Horsegum likes the bag boy's haircut, eyes, ears, shirt, apron, Nike shoes. Horsegum doesn't like the bag boy's nose, <laughs> mouth, name tag, jeans, Nike socks. Horsegum says, paper. Horsegum hands his credit card to the cashier without breaking eye contact with the bag boy. Horsegum senses the tension in the line building behind him. Horsegum senses the tension in the world building ahead of him. Horsegum realizes this second tension can be addressed later. Horsegum feels himself sweat. Horsegum is immediately self-conscious about still wearing sock hop clothes. Horsegum <laughs> leaves quickly with his groceries. Horsegum is excited for dinner. Horsegum returns home and begins preparing the zucchini bread. Horsegum sorts the ingredients. Horsegum measures three cups all-purpose flour. Horsegum scoops one tablespoon salt. Horsegum portions one teaspoon baking soda. Horsegum measures three teaspoons ground cinnamon. Horsegum removes three eggs from the fridge. Horsegum pours one cup vegetable oil. Horsegum measures two and one quarter cups white sugar. Horsegum spoons three teaspoons vanilla extract. Horsegum grates two cups zucchini. Horsegum chops one cup walnuts. Horsegum greases and flours two eight by four inch pans. Horsegum preheats the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Horsegum sifts flour, salt, baking powder, soda, and cinnamon together in a bowl. Horsegum beats eggs, oil, vanilla, and sugar together in a large bowl. Horsegum adds sifted ingredients to the creamed mixture. Horsegum beats well. Horsegum stirs in zucchini and nuts until well combined. Horsegum pours batter into the prepared pans. Horsegum bakes the bread for 40 to 60 minutes. Horsegum decides to text Bunchy hi while, he, while the bread bakes. Horsegum snacks on a packet of protein powder while waiting for the reply. Horsegum gets a text from Bunchy saying, hi Horsegum. Horsegum texts Bunchy, come over for some zucchini bread. Horsegum gets a text from Bunchy saying, okay. Horsegum gets a text from Oakgum saying, have you seen my wheat? Horsegum ignores Oakgum's text. Horsegum texts Bunchy, cool. Horsegum removes the zucchini bread from the oven. Horsegum cools the bread in pan on rack for completely cool. Horsegum hears a knock at the door. Horsegum assumes Bunchy thinks, good timing. Horsegum opens the door, sees Bunchy, says, good timing. Horsegum slices the zucchini bread. Horsegum eats every slice of zucchini bread. Horsegum feels empty inside. Horsegum tells Bunchy he has to leave now. Horsegum will find Bunchy later when he is more prepared. Horsegum is alone with his thoughts. Horsegum thinks of his adoptive father. Horsegum searches for the plush cave monster in the attic. Horsegum finds a box labeled adoptive father in black marker. Horsegum digs through the box. Horsegum finds the rubber ball. Horsegum finds the arrows. 
Horse Gome forgot all about the arrows. Horse Gome inspects each arrow individually. Horse Gome arranges the arrows according to size, but is dissatisfied. Horse Gome arranges the arrows according to function. Horse Gome pulls the plush cave monster from the box. Horse Gome dusts the face of the little toy. Horse Gome sighs. Horse Gome puts the plush cave monster and the arrows and the rubber ball back in the box. Horse Gome should go to bed early. He had a long day. Horse Gome performs the nighttime rituals. Horse Gome retires. Horse Gome feels afraid. Horse Gome wonders why. Horse Gome is visited by News Gome in the night. Horse Gome is warned of the assassination attempt. Horse Gome looks around the room for the assassin. Horse Gome sees the shoes under the curtain. Horse Gome tries to act casual and turns on the lamp. Horse Gome is nervous. Horse Gome runs to the shoes and pulls down the curtain. Horse Gome sees that it is Paul. Horse Gome is greeted by Paul. Horse Gome asks if Paul's flight was early. Horse Gome notices Paul's nose is peeling off. Horse Gome and Paul talk for a while about the old days. Horse Gome notices Paul's eyes are peeling off. Horse Gome notices Paul's entire face has peeled off. Horse Gome excuses himself. Horse Gome goes downstairs to the kitchen. Horse Gome sees Paul has followed him into the kitchen. Horse Gome hears Paul say, let's go camping. Horse Gome notices Paul's left hand has peeled off. Horse Gome doesn't say anything. Horse Gome packs his sleeping bag into Paul's rented Dodge. Horse Gome has never been camping and wants to go. Horse Gome is injured when Paul drives the Dodge into a ditch. Horse Gome gets out of the Dodge. Horse Gome helps Paul out of the ditch. Horse Gome notices Paul's entire left side has peeled off. Horse Gome sees a campfire at the end of the ditch. Horse Gome starts walking toward the campfire with Paul. Horse Gome wakes the sleeping hermit. Horse Gome asks if they can share the hermit's camp. Horse Gome falls asleep between Paul and the hermit. Horse Gome awakens midday. Horse Gome notices Paul has entirely peeled off. Horse Gome knew it was only a matter of time. Horse Gome says, goodbye, Paul. Horse Gome thanks the hermit for his hospitality. Horse Gome walks back to the city alone. Horse Gome arrives at the city limits just in time for the tennis day parade. Horse Gome never misses the tennis day parade. Horse Gome buys himself the mask. Horse Gome is the first to serenade an ocelot and is given a, the ceremonial wreath as usual. Horse Gome hears a volunteer say, we have the float ready for you, Horse Gome. Horse Gome always rides on the prettiest float at the tennis day parade. Horse Gome goes into the float barn. Horse Gome hears somebody. Horse Gome sees Floatmaster Alfred. Horse Gome talks to Floatmaster Alfred for a while. Horse Gome sees a photograph of Floatmaster Alfred's children on Floatmaster Alfred's iPhone. Horse Gome asks Floatmaster Alfred if he has filled out his March Madness bracket yet. Horse Gome decides to fill out his March Madness bracket while he waits for the tennis day parade to begin. Horse Gome predicts North Carolina A&T will defeat Liberty in the first round. Horse Gome predicts St. Mary's will defeat Middle Tennessee in the first round. Horse Gome predicts James Madison will defeat LIU Brooklyn in the first round. Horse Gome predicts LaSalle will defeat Boise State in the first round. Horse Gome predicts Louisville will defeat North Carolina A&T in the first round. Horse Gome predicts Colorado State will defeat Missouri in the second round. Horse Gome predicts Oregon will upset Oklahoma State in the second round. 
Corscombe predicts St. Louis will defeat New Mexico State in the second round. Corscombe predicts Memphis will defeat St. Mary's in the second round. Corscombe predicts Michigan State will defeat Valparaiso in the second round. Corscombe predicts Creighton will defeat Cincinnati in the second round. Corscombe predicts Duke will defeat Albany in the second round. Corscombe predicts Gonzaga will defeat so Southern in the second round. Corscombe predicts Wichita State will defeat Pittsburgh in the second round. Corscombe predicts Ole Miss will upset Wisconsin in the second round. Corscombe predicts LaSalle will upset Kansas State in the second round. Corscombe predicts Arizona will defeat Belmont in the second round. Corscombe predicts Harvard will upset New Mexico in the second round. Corscombe predicts <laughs> Iowa State will upset Notre Dame in the second round. Corscombe predicts Iowa State will defeat Iona in the second round. Corscombe predicts Kansas will defeat West Kentucky in the second round. Corscombe predicts North Carolina will defeat Villanova in the second round. Corscombe predicts VCU will defeat Akron in the second round. Corscombe predicts Michigan will defeat South Dakota in the second round. Corscombe predicts Minnesota will upset UCLA in the second round. Corscombe predicts Florida will defeat Northwestern State in the second round. Corscombe predicts Minnesota will upset UCLA in the second round. Corscombe predicts Florida will defeat Northwestern State in the second round. Corscombe predicts San Diego State will defeat Oklahoma in the second round. Corscombe predicts Florida Gulf Coast will upset Georgetown in the second round. Corscombe predicts Indiana will defeat James Madison in the second round. Corscombe predicts Temple will upset NC State in the second round. Corscombe predicts California will upset UNLV in the second round. Corscombe predicts Syracuse will defeat Montana in the second round. Corscombe predicts Butler will defeat Bucknell in the second round. Corscombe predicts Marquette will defeat Davidson in the second round. Corscombe predicts Illinois will defeat Colorado in the second round. Corscombe predicts Miami, Florida will defeat Pacific in the second round. Corscombe predicts Louisville will defeat Colorado State in the third round. Corscombe <laughs> predicts Oregon will upset St. Louis in the third round. Corscombe <laughs> predicts Michigan State will defeat Memphis in the third round. Corscombe predicts Duke will defeat Creighton in the third round. Corscombe predicts Wichita State will upset Gonzaga in the third round. Corscombe predicts LaSalle will upset Ole Miss in the third round. Corscombe predicts Arizona will defeat Harvard in the third round. Corscombe predicts Ohio State will defeat Iowa State in the third round. Corscombe predicts Kansas will defeat North Carolina in the third round. Corscombe predicts Florida will defeat Minnesota in the third round. Corscombe predicts Florida Gulf Coast will upset San Diego State in the third round. Corscombe predicts Indiana will defeat Temple in the third round. Corscombe predicts Syracuse will defeat California in the third round. Corscombe predicts Marquette will defeat Butler in the third round. Corscombe predicts Miami, Florida will defeat Illinois in the third round. Corscombe predicts Louisville will defeat Oregon in the Sweet 16. Corscombe predicts Duke will defeat Michigan State in the Sweet 16. Corscombe predicts Wichita State will defeat LaSalle in the Sweet 16. Corscombe predicts Ohio State will defeat Arizona in the Sweet 16. Corscombe predicts Michigan will upset Kansas in the Sweet 16. Corscombe predicts Florida will defeat Florida Gulf Coast in the Sweet 16. Corscombe predicts Syracuse will upset Indiana in the Sweet 16. Corscombe predicts Marquette will upset Miami, Florida in the Sweet 16. Corscombe predicts Louisville will defeat Duke in the Elite Eight. Corscombe predicts Wichita State will upset Ohio State in the Elite Eight. 
Horsecomb predicts Michigan will upset Florida in the Elite Eight. Horsecomb predicts Syracuse will upset Marquette in the Elite Eight. Horsecomb predicts Louisville will defeat Wichita State in the Final Four. Horsecomb predicts Michigan will defeat Syracuse in the Final Four. Horsecomb predicts Louisville will defeat Michigan in the championship. Horsecomb is cheerful when the Tennis Day Parade begins. Horsecomb <laughs> always liked the Tennis Day Parade. Horsecomb scams the crowd. Horsecomb sees Oakcomb. Horsecomb sees Newsgomb, who may or may not be Horsecomb. Horsecomb sees the hermit disguised as Paul. Horsecomb is declared the highlight of the parade. Horsecomb hugs the hermit. Horsecomb says, I gotta go. Horsecomb finds Bungie on a date with the 19-year-old at the cemetery. Horsecomb <laughs> hides behind Albing's grave. Horsecomb <laughs> wears the ghost costume. Horsecomb makes the 19-year-old run away. Horsecomb knows Bunchy knows better. Horsecomb ties Bunchy to the guardrail. Horsecomb looks around. Horsecomb unties Bunchy from the guardrail. Horsecomb leaves. Horsecomb goes home. Horsecomb gets the mail. Horsecomb opens an envelope containing a check for $11 million. <laughs> Horsecomb accurately predicted the outcome of every March Madness game. <laughs> Horsecomb buys a larger house. Horsecomb buys a larger car. Horsecomb buys a leather jacket. Horsecomb buys Oakcomb's pleasure yacht. Horsecomb has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Horsecomb throws a yacht party. Horsecomb invites everyone except Bunchy. Horsecomb prepares the decorations. Horsecomb hires Puppy, who is the best caterer. Horsecomb welcomes everyone to the yacht, including Bunchy. Horsecomb mingles. Horsecomb receives compliments for his leather jacket. Horsecomb rejects Oakcomb's criticism of his redecoration. Horsecomb tastes the soup. Horsecomb squabbles with Puppy in the galley. Horsecomb wins the argument. Horsecomb calls Puppy a piece of garbage. <laughs> Horsecomb entertains the guests. Horsecomb announces the first course is served. Horsecomb eats only cookies during the first course. Horsecomb notices people starting to vomit. <laughs> Horsecomb supposes Puppy has sabotaged the meal. Horsecomb knows Puppy could beat him in a fight. Horsecomb does nothing. Horsecomb is confronted by vomiting guests. Horsecomb does nothing. Horsecomb falls into disgrace. Horsecomb hears the people chant. Horsecomb, horsecomb, we refuse you. Horsecomb, horsecomb, we refuse you. Horsecomb goes into exile for 20 years. <laughs> Horsecomb returns from exile, and a lot has changed. Horsecomb reads the signs saying, re-elect President Bunchy. Horsecomb enters the Oval Office at 11. Horsecomb ties Bunchy to the guardrail. Horsecomb sees Bunchy's men enter the Oval Office. Horsecomb is tied to the guardrail by Bunchy's men. Horsecomb sees Bunchy untied. Horsecomb congratulates Bunchy on Bunchy's success. Horsecomb says you're welcome when Bunchy says thank you. Horsecomb sees Bunchy and Bunchy's men open a bottle of brandy. Horsecomb hears Bunchy's men say, we did it! Horsecomb escapes during the fanfare. Horsecomb corners Bunchy beneath the portrait of Abraham Lincoln. Horsecomb is detained by the portrait of Abraham Lincoln. Horsecomb watches Bunchy run off. Horsecomb chases Bunchy to the roof. Horsecomb climbs the ladder after Bunchy. Horsecomb sees Bunchy jump down through the circular aperture. Horsecomb jumps down through the circular aperture. Horsecomb lands in the James Terrell sky space. Horsecomb wonders where Bunchy went. Horsecomb pauses to admire the artwork. 
Horscombe exits through the door of the James Terrell sky space in search of Bunchy. Horscombe enters the second James Terrell sky space from the first. Horscombe is confused. Horscombe pauses to admire the beauty of the sunlight as it passes through the rectangular opening. Horscombe is confused. Horscombe exits the second James Terrell sky space, entering the third. Horscombe grows increasingly frustrated. Horscombe shouts for Bunchy to no avail. Horscombe cares less about the beauty of the sunlight as it passes through the ovoid opening. Horscombe tries one more door and is in the fourth James Terrell sky space. Horscombe backtracks from the fourth James Terrell sky space into the first. Horscombe tries another door. Horscombe is in the third James Terrell sky space. Horscombe's panic grows. Horscombe checks Google Maps, which suggests the storm drain. Horscombe moves through the storm drain into the 11th James Terrell sky space. Horscombe finds the door from the 11th James Terrell sky space leads into the 8th James Terrell sky space, which has twin circular apertures. Horscombe sees the blimp. Horscombe waves at the blimp. Horscombe is unseen. Horscombe tries another door. Horscombe is in the third James Terrell sky space. Horscombe gestures frantically at the blimp. Horscombe sees the blimp navigate into the sky space. The blimp vanish as Newsgome emerges. Horsegome watches Newsgome start to dance. Horsegome knows Newsgome may or may not be Horsegome. Horsegome mimics the dance moves. Horsegome always liked to dance. Horsegome asks what happens next. Horsegome hears the song. Have a song, please. loading. The song is loading, so I'll just sing. <laughs> I love tennis day. I love tennis day. Playing on the court. I love, I love Tennis day. Life is short. I love, I love tennis day. I love tennis day. I Thanks again. <laughs>